If you have a mommy's heart, a daddy's heart, a grandma or grandpa's heart, I think it's safe to say that if somebody brought a child to you, whether that child is a year old and in diapers, barely able to walk, or three years old and just barely potty trained and can hardly talk, speaks another language, and they said, will you please help us care for this child temporarily? That either A, you would do it, or B, you would find someone who would do it. I mean, God help us if our hearts are hardened to children. The book of James says that true religion and undefiled before God and the Father is to help the fatherless and the widow in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. That's true Christianity. That's true religion. So here's where this becomes like a Rubik's Cube, all crazed up of principles that are pulling at one another and don't seem to line up. For example, in Nebraska, the federal government, without telling the governor of the state, brought 200 unaccompanied minors to the state of Nebraska. And where did they go? They went with family members or sponsors. There was no breakdown if there were like four cousins that helped with the children and 196 families from a local adoption agency. There was no breakdown of the stats, but it meant that primarily these are not relatives of children, but these are people with a compassionate heart. And thank God for people with compassionate heart. But it's very possible, I believe likely, that politically what's going on is that Obama is using these children as a human shield, like Saddam Hussein did. And, and for those of you who thought, wait a minute, I know that image. Why do I know that? You're not familiar with the history from the early 90s um, and then again in the early 2000s. What Saddam Hussein did was he placed himself with children around him constantly and took pictures of them so that if the Allied forces tried to kill him, they would knowingly be killing all of those children. So it was a way for him to protect himself, a very immoral way, I might add. And I think that there's a strong argument that Obama and his administration are using children as a political human shield because as the media begins to focus on the plight of these children, the more that people cry out for the border to be secured and for these people to be to deported, the more they will look like the cruel, uncompassionate, unkind people and it shields Obama from the political fallout. All right? That's what I mean by Obama using these children as a human shield. And we have to be careful. I mean, that's again, that's that Rubik's Cube. Talk about all these principles in conflict. <clears throat> but when you bring 200 children to a state and don't let people know that they're coming, this has the, 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 the cruelty on some level of... Uh, Maybe, maybe this is a bad comparison, but slightly accurate. There were actually people, there was one crusade that was a children's crusade where they let children go first, thinking that because the children were so pure, they would be able to fight and not die. That turned out to be a colossal mistake, <laughs> all right? It was, it was horrible. Obama is in great political trouble because of this. It's actually, it, it's no longer a no-lose situation for him. And the reason is this. We're a nation of laws. Obama swore an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America. And he's starting to skate on really thin ice. There's no question that the word is out throughout Central America that if children make it across the border, they're going to be housed, they're going to be fed, they're going to receive medical attention, and they're going to be kept here for the foreseeable future. And I agree, by the way, with every voice that said, you just can't send them back on the death train. You can't even just fly into another country and drop them at the airport and say they're your problem. Because for some of these children, it would mean imminent danger and, God forbid, perhaps death. So we see the crisis brewing before us and how Obama and his minions are successfully exploiting these children while at the same time helping them. <clears throat> so I think that one of our fallback positions 
that is not just a fallback, but it's got to be a, a foundational, from which we do not, de, do, do not depart, is that at the end of the day, these 12, soon 13 million illegal immigrants must not be given the right to vote. All right? Look at what your adversary wants. Figure out the end game of the adversary. It's so that the laws of the United States, through its elected officials, will be determined by this soon-to-be-created voting block if Obama gets his way. So now that we know that that's what they want, we say, all right, we're going to deal with this humanely. We're going to, but we're not going to ever let these people vote, ever, because that's what you want. You're trying to skew the entire political process. And we can look at it based upon Mosaic Law, all right, again, you show compassion to the foreigner, you, they have to obey the laws of Israel when they're there. They were not allowed to worship idols, all right? They, were, they had to follow the God of Israel, and they were not allowed to vote for the representatives. So we can have that as a sort of a compassionate and just way to undo this Rubik's Cube so that we're not monsters in dealing with the widow and the orphan, but we're also not politically stupid committing political suicide by letting the fate of this country be in the hands of people who have overrun our border illegally with the wink and the nod of this disastrous president. Mm -hmm.